crafty friends welcome to the fourth episode in my pigment powders 101 series so far we've looked at using pigment powders dry with gilding flakes we've made paints and done splattering and smushing with them and we've used them to make our own embossing powders Today we're going to use them to make our own shimmer sprays. So you may have seen this before if you watched my Never Going To Buy These Again video. This is a homemade shimmer spray that I made using green luscious pigment powder. And all I did was put some water in this travel sprayer and a good dollop of luscious powder give it a good shake and then I can spray it onto a piece of paper or card and use it as I would any other shimmer spray. Luscious powders contain pigment powder, some mica or glitter and binder which means that when they get wet they will be bound to the thing that you spray them on like a cardstock or paper so when this dries i won't be able to brush it off the water in the spray activates the binder and that sticks the pigment and the mica to the paper if you make your own homemade shimmer sprays and find that either the pigment or the mica or both brush off once dry that's because there's no binder in there so what you'll need to do is spray your finished project with something like hairspray or a transparent fixative that you can get from a craft or art shop. And then that should keep everything where it should be. So as I said, this one was made from green luscious powder. Today I'm going to make one from Hunky Dory Prism World of Colour Pearlescent Powder in Pearly Pink. Lots of peas there. And these little squirters or misters, I think I got these from Amazon, but you can get them from a pharmacy or a cheap shop, like a pound shop, or the travel section of a supermarket, and they're not very expensive really. So all I'm going to do is add some water to my bottle. You can use cold boiled water you can use distilled water or you can use water straight from the tap sometimes if you use water straight from the tap you might find you get some mold growth in there over time a lot of people have suggested to me that you make these up with alcohol instead of water the only problem with that is that breathing in alcohol vapor can be very dangerous so if you're going to do that do it in a well ventilated area but you might find that you can make it up with mostly water and add maybe a squirt of isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol in there and it will reduce the amount of alcohol vapour produced. If you live in a warm dry climate you might not get a problem with mould growth at all. I live in England which is well known for its uh, damp environment in the winter especially so um, I only ever make up small quantities so that they get used up quickly and that reduces the chance of any mould growth. So all I'm going to do is get some pigment powder, pop it in there, and just keep adding it until I feel like I've got a really lovely strong shimmery spray and then I can put the lid on and give it a really good shake and every time you use these give them a good shake to get the mica and the pigment powder moving you could always pop in a little ball bearing or something uh, to help things mix as you shake and now I can spray this Ooh, spraying out in all sorts of random directions this one I don't really want to get this on my clothes or even my skin because it's so pigmented. Let's see if we can get it to spray in the right direction. No, it's going to spray out sideways. That is very bizarre, but there you go. You can see. Let me just have a look. Why is that doing that? No idea. Anyway, my hands are now bright pink and so is everything else, but I think we're all right. To prevent clogging, I recommend just giving 
the nozzle a good wipe over after every use. You can also hold them upside down, spritz them a couple of times and that will clear the nozzle of any spray. So you can prevent clogging that way. Now I'm just going to dry this and we'll see what it looks like. So here we have the green shimmer spray made with the luscious powders and hopefully you can see the shimmer there. And this is the one made with the hunky dory pearlescent powders. The green one doesn't rub off at all. The pink one does rub off a little bit. So if I was going to use this on a card, I'd probably give this a spray with hairspray or fixative. This is the fixative that I normally use, Winsor & Newton Professional Fixative. And all you do is give it a really good shake outdoors or in a very well ventilated area with your surfaces protected spray it from about 12 inches 30 centimeters away just give it a good coat let it dry and then that should keep your color and your mica on the paper and it doesn't damage the shimmer or shine at all it keeps it nice and shimmery so that's the basics of the shimmer spray and you can do whatever you would normally do with your shimmer sprays. You can spray them on a finished project, you can create a background, you can spray them through a stencil, spray an embossing folder, whatever you'd normally do with a shimmer spray. Or if you're using something that hasn't got shimmer in it like brushos, you're obviously going to get a matte finish and it, but again you can just use that to create a nice sprayed texture. So let's use the shimmer sprays to make a card. So I think what I'm going to do is there's only a tiny little bit of the green left in there. I'm going to add some more water, a couple of squirts, and then put some teal in. Create a more teal spray. Before we spray though, I want to add some speckled egg to this piece of mixed media paper. It's going to be my base colour. There's a bit of um, salvage patina on there still, but I'm quite happy with the blend of the salvage patina and the speckled egg. So I'm happy with that blending. I don't need it to be perfect because I'm going to spritz on it. And I'm just taping this down. I could get a grip mat out, but quite frankly, I don't know where I've put it. I really cannot see it anywhere. So I'm going to have to have a hunt for my grip mat in a minute. But anyway, that is anchored down now. And I'm going to give my spray a good shake and I'm just going to squirt it on here because it will have the green in it and now it's coming through teal. Give it a good shake and from up above, mist it over. And I'm going to lift up my stencil and hopefully we will see a nice shimmery pattern. There we go. Give that a bit of a wipe. Turn it upside down, squirt it into there to clear the nozzle. And now I'm going to give this a dry with my hairdryer. So next I'm going to emboss half of my panel with this swirly embossing folder from, this one's from Vesson Creative. To give it a bit more texture. And now we've got a lovely circular embossed pattern. And to highlight the raised pattern, I'm just going to scrub off a layer of colour using this nail buffer. Give it a dust off with my microfiber cloth. It's got a lot more texture, but it's still got the shimmer and shine of the pattern. 
So for this card, I'm going to create an aperture in the front panel. So this is three and three quarters by five and three quarter inches, smooth white cardstock. So my final card is going to be four by six inches. And I've got a three eighths corner positioner, which I'm going to pop in there. And then I'm going to butt that up there. And I'm going to hold that in place with a small piece of washi tape and die cut that using my cuttle bag. So there's our aperture. This can go on the back there. But to add in some extra dimension, I'm gonna pop this layer up on foam tape. And now I've taken the backing off the foam tape. I can pop this on here. So now that's stuck down, I can pop this on a four by six inch card blank. So now that's done, I'm going to construct my focal point. So the first thing I'm going to cut is a tag made from vellum. That's going to go there. So it provides a bit of a, a surface, but doesn't obscure all the detail behind it. And then I've got these. And I'm thinking maybe just those two from gold foil cardstock. So something like that. I wanted to use circles because I've got these circles in the background. So I thought I'd bring them forwards. So now I'm going to cut a butterfly from the shimmer sprayed card. So this can sit on the front here and as I'm looking at this, I'm not overly keen on that vellum tag. I think I want something different behind, something more solid. So I'm thinking I might use a ticket shape, but give the ticket ever such a light blush of the salvaged patina. So I haven't re-inked my brush. So I'm wondering that, but maybe with a white one behind it, to create a bit more separation. So I think that would work across there. So pop some glue on the back of the speckled egg ticket. Sandwich those together. And now I'm gonna pop that on there like that. So just get my T-square ruler to make sure it's lined up straight. And now we can pop the gold on there and this butterfly. I'm thinking maybe the butterfly needs vellum behind it just to help it stand off of what's behind it. So I've cut another butterfly out of smooth white cardstock. I'm thinking I might add that offset. I will remove the antenna though, because I don't think we need two sets of antenna. And pop a little bit of glue on the back there. And offset it so I peek out above and to the left like the ticket and then hang on i need to stick my gold circles down first so i'm going to spread some more high tech glue on there Get a damp baby wipe on the end of my finger and I can just lift off any smudges of glue from the foil carefully. Pop, whoops. Pop some glue on the body part of my butterfly and attach that there. 
and I've got a ready-made sentiment here. This is one I created in the Silhouette Studio software and printed at home and then cut on my Silhouette Cameo. And I think I'll just glue that down. Round about here. So it nestles into this area here. And I've got some gold Nouveau drops here that I'm going to use to give my butterfly a bit of a body like that and a bit of a head. Just go all the way down to the tip of his tail. And I'm going to add a few gold dots as well. So today's video has been all about making homemade shimmer sprays using pigment powders. I hope you found it helpful and maybe picked up some hints and tips along the way. If you have, please do let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, ring the notification bell and come back in a couple of days for the next episode in the series, which is going to be about using pigment powders with stencils, but not the shimmer spray stenciling. Other techniques that use stencils and pigment powders. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.